Dan Goldman, uh, CPO at Rhodes. Today I want to show you the new Rhodes V8 Pro, which is the very first Rhodes plugin ever made. Okay, so for the first part of this uh, tutorial, we're going to go through the main view. There's three views in total on the V8 Pro. Main setup, which deals with the under the hood settings as if you're taking the lid off, and the detail page, which is further sculpting of uh, parameters in more depth. First of all, we're going to start at the left-hand side of the panel. This closely mimics the, uh, the Mark 8 itself. It's a combination of sampling and modeling. On the very left-hand side, we have the main volume control. And following that, we have the envelope. Now, this is like an amount to filter control. The EQ section on the Mark 8 and on the V8 Pro uh, features a resonant um, a voltage controlled analog mid filter. And if we turn up our envelope here to full, and then we turn up our gain, mid range gain, and pull down the frequency to say somewhere halfway between 100 and 220 hertz, then we uh, will get a kind of wire effect, auto wire basically. And uh, with the mid frequency here, you can get it to affect different parts of the keyboard more than others. So the higher the frequency, the more it affects the high frequencies. And the lower the frequencies, the more it affects the low frequencies. So you can hear that there. Okay, so that's the envelope. Uh, there's a lot of control there, a lot of nuance in there, but that's the basics of it. So it's uh, an envelope filter that controls the mid-range EQ circuit. Uh, so next up is the drive control, which is modeled from the, the Mark 8 preamp itself. Again, it's an analog drive circuit that's been modeled. I'll just play a little bit of clean sound first. thickens the sound just as a nice little bit of texture. But then as we go up and up and up, so that's not even halfway yet and it's already sounding pretty dirty there. Also reacts to velocity as it does on the uh, the real Mark 8 as well. So you can have it low but play into it harder for different textures. And then take it up to halfway. And as we turn up even la even further, we get gain compensation, so it brings down the, the main volume virtually in the background, as the same thing happens on the real Mark 8 as well. What's also really nice is how this interacts with the envelope that we were just using before. So if I turn up the envelope control again, so around three quarters of the way, turn up the gain on the uh, mid EQ. Now you've got a really nice envelope filtered distorted sound. And again, depending on how hard you play. down the envelope dial there we can use that like a filter control mounter filter much as you would have on an analog synth
Now moving on to the EQ. Again, it's uh, modeled directly from the, the Mark 8 uh, EQ circuit. And uh, we've got a low uh, control here, which is bass. So you can go from minus 15 right the way to plus 15, so it can get really warm and round sounding. That's max. Um, and then the flip side, the minus 15, nicely thins the sound out. again. And some more low again. It's a really versatile low range that's perfectly suited to the, perfectly designed, it was designed for the, the road circuit so acts really well on the road's frequency range. Next up, um, we've got the high control again, which is plus or minus 15 dBs. Here's the flat, the flat setting. Here's the fully boosted plus 15 setting. position. So you can actually alt click here as well to reset the zero as well which is pretty handy. And then combine that with the uh, a little high lift, a little low lift and then um, some mid-range boost and you can really dial in the sort of belliness of the times as well. So you can get really surgical in that mid-range there and, you know, sculpt all sorts of different sounds from across the different eras of, of Rhodes Pianos as well. So it's a great circuit, really musical, really versatile. Um, next up is the, uh, the famous Rhodes panning section, which is now called VariPan, which stands for variable panning. Uh, and again, this is directly modelled from the, uh, the Mark 8 piano. And what's variable about it is not just the speed and the depth, which goes right, the speed goes right into audio rates for like ring mod effects uh, and, and different sonic special effects. But um, also we've got four different wave shapes, square, ramp, uh, triangle and sign, uh, again for different textures. So, and it's also syncable uh, to MIDI. So if we just switch that on. got a very big, a very wide range of uh, rate, speed, right up to here. And you can, uh, you can effectively blend the, the dry V8 Mark 8 sound with the affected sound as well. So you can go fully up here, which almost gets you like synth, stroke, transistor, organ, organ type uh, sounds. And again, if you combine that with the drive, the envelope, you can get talking vowel type sounds as well, which is it's pretty cool. If we turn off the envelope and the drive again, then we can go back and do kind of ring moddy. Type of X 
house as well. So it's a whole world of, uh, of crazy effects in here as well as the classic panning. Uh, I just want to quickly show you the different pan shapes and how they sound as well. So this is the, the square wave. That's on full depth, so let's take that down to about halfway at the minute. Let's change that to the ramp wave. Cheers here. Triangle wave. Again, another nice texture. Finally, the sine wave, which is super smooth. Some more depth, and then you can hear the speed as well, how that changes the sound. And again, when you combine, say for example, uh, the ramp wave, with some envelope. You get some nice filtered kind of stepping through the harmonic sound filter, which is really nice. Okay, so that's the main preamp section. As you can hear, it's super versatile, very unique, and it's the only virtual recreation of the Mark 8 as well. Next, we're gonna move on to the uh, effects section, which again is modeled directly from the Mark 8 and uh, features an analog compressor, analog uh, chorus, analog phaser, and analog delay. Um, so if we start with the compressor, we've got makeup and amount. Turn up the amount, you can hear there how it really accentuates the, the attack of the piano and the, you can compensate with the gain control there as you add more compression. You can get it to really pop. If we back off that compression a little there. It's nice when you're soloing as well, soloing because it just kind of adds some nice round attack to the... Start of the note. Turn that off again. Um, next up, we've got the stereo analog chorus. Turn up the volume there a bit. And like the other time-based effects, you can sync this to the uh, tempo of your project, whether in your, in your DAW, um, which is really handy as well. Also goes nicely fast. You can use it for kind of vibrato effects and...
And all this can be written into automation within your DAW as well for maximum uh, versatility. Uh, next up, we've got the uh, phaser. Again, modeled from the, uh, directly from the Mark 8 FX. We have a rate and depth control again, like the chorus and the uh, very pan. So you can get all the classic effects that you'd want to use with the roads, and they're all built in here. The final effect that we've got is the uh, is the delay. Again, it's a bucket brigade effect, like the chorus that's here. Uh, the compressor and the phaser are VCA-based effects. The chorus and delay are BBD effects, bucket brigade effects. And the delay sounds like this. You get those infinite repeat kind of effects, and then you can almost like a record vinyl kind of stop in. It's great for special effects. But also, you can get some uh, almost spring reverb type sounds at the, at the shorter end of the spectrum. If you just turn up the mix a bit and then keep the feedback low and the time up a bit. Let's just go a little longer. And then when you start combining all the effects together, a bit of compression, delay, chorus. And you can have the phaser and chorus on together, which again makes for some quite interesting effects. <laughs> 